Okay, well, uh, it's a pleasure to be here on this this uh, program today. Uh, this is a topic that I personally am excited about. Uh, scaling regenerative agriculture is really apropos for what we're going on through in BC here. And uh, I just want to uh, welcome everybody that uh, to what I my part of this presentation. I'm Stan Lowen, Vice Chair here. Uh, I have my, I'm a professional agrologist, a UBC soil science grad from way back in 1979, and uh, happy to be here. Our company, TerraLink, is celebrating 50 years of business in 2023. And so it's a delight to be able to finish off the 50 with an engagement in soil health, which is a topic I'm really, really onto. Next. So we have two mandate statements from the BC Ministry of Agriculture. The first one that BC intends to be a leader in bringing innovation, technology adoption and regenerative practices that will build increases, bring increases in productivity, profitability and sustainable to BC's food systems. And next, here's a, another statement that is clarifying regenerative agriculture, a set of techniques that avoids chemicals and promotes soil health is emerging as one of the solutions BC can lead the country in developing and scaling. And uh, these are both pretty powerful statements. Um, this is exciting. Um, agriculture has a lot of challenges. Economics are certainly one of them. And uh, by using innovation and technology and regen to uh, bring about a better future for farming, is fantastic and so we're wanting to walk this walk and join in on this process next scaling uh i, I might uh, i'm just going to move quickly through things here uh, so yes we're pleased to join the conversation and the experience and experience the process we want to talk the talk and we want to walk the walk with everybody as this gets developed Scaling sustainability is something that we as a company wholeheartedly support. And that is within the context that we understand at this time. Might not be up to where some of you are and just listening to the previous presentation. I'm wishing I had heard that before I prepared this, but we'll go with it and we'll see where we go. I have to say, though, that the concept of avoiding the use of chemicals or eliminating them that's a really broad statement, can mean a lot of things to a lot of people, and we're really curious to know more about what that really means. If avoiding the use of chemicals means using more biopesticides, uh, biologics, um, uh, biostimulants, and things of that nature, yeah, we're all behind it. We know that we're looking for reduced use of pesticides in agriculture, and we need tools to, to accomplish that. And uh, so that's, that's what we're looking for here. And we want to see how this is going to go on the chemical front. Next. So who is TerraLink? We're a leading crop inputs company located in Abbotsford, Delta, Chilliwack, and Kelowna, BC. And we have a location in Airdrie, Alberta. We're a seller of crop inputs to the farm, recreation, reclamation, and home and garden markets. And TerraLink offers customers all three types of inputs, conventional, organic-based, and certified organic. We bought an organic company, fertilizer company in 2015, and we are sticking with it. And we've brought a lot of it into our conventional egg already with our organic-based products. So what is TerraLink? We are a hybrid. If we are a were a car, we would be a hybrid car. Next. So what do we market? Crop nutrition and fertilizers and soil conditioners. Crop protection. It includes pesticides, biopesticides and biologics, grass seed, agri-plastics, and we provide a lot of technical support and field services to our customers. We are a techni technically oriented company. We see ourselves as technocrats applying science to the sales services and markets of our company. Our motto is that we supply sound science and safe solutions 
we're sticking with that. We think that's a good underpinning for what we're trying to accomplish. We support the crop inputs industry pillars, which are the four R's. The four R's are use the right products in the right place at the right time at the right rate. And if a farmer does that, they're well on their way to learning how to be sustainable and regenerative as they make choices. So there have to be some basic uh, assumptions that are made if we're talking about British Columbia becoming more innovative, more technology adaptive, and more regenerative, and putting a lot of changes in place. First of all, we have to retain and maintain our competitive economic fundamentals. This is the driver of everything. What we do in the future cannot go backwards economically. It has to move forwards. And that should be based on a very balanced food policy and regulatory framework. It has to go hand in hand. These two things drive the competitive nature of agriculture. And we think Canada has a pretty good system already. And BC is a definitely a big part of that. And we want to see that get enhanced and continue. If, we, if we're switching to a more regenerative type of agriculture, then buy-in is critical at the farm level and at the ag retailer level. Ag retailers are the main conduit that farmers get their information from on what to do, what not to do. And so if we're going to have buy-in, then we have to get people to understand what the mandates are, knowing that the mandates are going to take time they're going to and they must result in higher returns and solutions to the eco challenges that should be formatted to not be regressive but be progressive in nature why would i say that well when we talk about eliminating chemicals are we talking about eliminating fertilizers or are we just talking about pesticides what are we talking about mm -hmm. There's a fear that we might be talking about taking away things that shouldn't be. Maybe these are things that might get eliminated through better practices overall with reductions in need. And I think that's a critical part of how we're going to approach this thing. If we're looking for change, it's got to be holistic and get us there in a, in a manner that people can buy into. Ultimately, though, in British Columbia here, we have only about 3% arable land. That's the number that's kicked around. And a lot of that's in the urban uh, uh, agricultural interface areas with a lot of pressure on the land. In BC, we have the agricultural land reserve, which is absolutely necessary. And it has to be a viable agricultural land base in order for there to be enough agriculture to have the support we need to have an in industry. Next. So the three pillars that we're talking about, innovation, new tech, and regenerative, it speaks to the entrepreneurial spirit and nature of BC agriculture as it is already. You don't exist in BC, which is largely perennial crops, Cranberries, blueberries, raspberries, grapes, tree fruits, um, forage grasses uh, for dairy uh, and, and, and ranching and such. And a lot of the perennial crops um, are already uh, doing a, a pretty good job of a lot of things um, regenerative. Uh, and I want to get into that a bit later. But in order to, to farm here, the capital investment is huge. We're talking about land prices that are $150,000, maybe $200,000 an acre. How do you farm without having intensive production and make money? Well, we're saying kudos to BC. Let's drive innovation. Let's drive technology. Let's drive for regenerative success so that this valuable land remains productive and economically viable. 
When we talk regenerative, we're talking about both old and new techniques. Um, the whole concept of a term which we don't use anymore, which is soil and crop husbandry, well, soil and crop husbandry, you can get what that means. We'll just figure out a new term someday. This is regenerative. Uh, good crop and soil husbandry, good crop and soil farming practices, maybe we should say, done right is regenerative in its very nature. And that's something that Terralink is really promoting and we're trying to drive towards as a company. So if you go out into the community, are we regenerative? Are we sustainable? In many cases, there's a lot of elements of that. In, in many cases, there aren't. So it's a mixed bag. But we, we have evidence all over the province that we are doing a pretty good job getting the kinds of yields, productivity, and returns that we already are. BC is not a problem area for uh, good crops, good yields, good returns. We are doing well in our intensive agricultural markets. Next. The future of farming in BC is high value crops. And if regenerative agriculture costs more in the short term, but pays back in the long term, then our high value capital intensive systems uh, are exactly what they should be and, and we are where they should be practiced. Um, a lot of farmers listen to these conversations about sustainable regenerative farming and they say, hey, what's wrong? They say, are we not sustainable? Say, I farm legally. I do what I should do. I use everything at label rates. I don't exceed label rates. I, I, um, I apply my nutrients. I apply my manure, my compost, whatever, when I should and not when I shouldn't. Um, I cover crop. I make sure my soil's not blowing away in the wind or going in the ditch. I keep it on my fields so I don't have exposure to erosion. I'm trying to prevent pollution of my groundwater. So am I not a sustainable farm? Well, it's a, it's a deep question. And, but I hope everybody's aware that this is being asked and, and it's being questioned whether they are sustainable or not. So there's some work to do in, uh, in maybe education here. Next. Terminology absolutely abounds. And it is confusing to farmers and users. Regenerative, renewal, sustainable, soil health, biologics, organics, organic-based, carbon-based, emissions reduction, stabilized nitrogen, denitrification. There's a lot of terminology out there, and they are being popularized by government and industry. And it's a good thing. We need to popularize we need to have the terminology out there and people need to understand what, this, what these terms mean. This is part of applying the science, is getting an understanding of the terminology. And we are excited that the BC government is taking this initiative because we want to do more in terms of getting awareness of what's going on out there in the farm community key. Because there's a big picture in the world out there and BC is a small market with a, a lot of small farms that don't understand what's going on out there in the prairies and in Ontario, Quebec, and down in the States. Your whole situation there is vast. So uh, kudos on the government for this. Um, soil health is definitely becoming a common term. And some of you have seen the, the barrel. It's the wine barrel with the staves where some are shorter than the other and others. And the different staves represent maybe nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, whatever, micronutrients, and so forth. And, of course, the law, the minimum applies where, um, you know, you can only fill the barrel up to the level of the shortest stave. Well, we think that soil health is becoming or is already should be known as the shortest stave in the barrel 
of the law of the minimum. And this is becoming something that if we're going to get productivity increases, everybody has to buy into. And so we're the we're 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 looking at that. Next. So what's the heart of the matter? Terralink believes that um, soil organic matter or the organic acids, the soil carbon, these are the things that are key to the success of just about everything. If you take a brand new soil where your river maybe has an alluvial, alluvial deposit that's new, well, that soil is not going to turn into a productive soil unless one thing happens. And that is plants have to start growing on it, dying back and growing again the next year, dying back and you create organic matter and that creates a topsoil. And eventually you'll have some pretty good humus. You'll have organic matter, organic acids and soil carbon. And these are definitely the key factors to create a soil and to keep a soil healthy including during intensive crop production. It can all happen at the same time. And this applies whether you're a conventional farmer, organic-based, or organic, certified organic. It's all the same. The same factors, the same science applies. Next. So briefly now, here, this is, as you can tell, I'm getting a little bit revved up here. <laughs> this is... These are factors that are near and dear to me. And this is how you, uh, if you're farming regeneratively or heading in that direction, you need to do these things. If you aren't doing it already, you need to manage your water. We just heard that in the previous presentation. Water management is the key. It's the start of everything. If you don't have drainage and you've got drainage issues, then you need to get it in the ground. And you need irrigation because if you've got summer drought, uh, you need to have that water supplementation. Uh, but managing the water on both hand, ends of the spectrum there is the key. And uh, you get that out of the way and start talking about creating uh, continuously building soil organic matter, you're on the way to some soil health. What's involved in building soil organic matter? Well, we just saw, heard some of that already here. Use low-till and no-till Leave as much trash on the surface as you possibly can. Fortunately, in the Canadian prairies and in the American plains, there's a lot of low-till and no-till. In fact, in Western Canada, in the prairies, we probably have 80 to 90% of the row cropping in low-till or no-till. This is a huge change over 20, 30, 40 years ago when it wasn't being practiced. Um, you're Thank you, Stan. I'm just wondering how many clips we have as we're just a little bit tight for time now. Okay, we, we can wrap it up. Just let's let's just move ahead. Here are all the soil factors. Let's go right right to the end where it's a summary. Here we go in summary. So what do we need to do? Well, this is these are my ideas off the top. We need analytical tools for soil health. Um, we don't know how to measure it. We want to measure it. Just like we measure soil for nutrients, we need to measure it for soil health. We need education. We need to uh, get our parameters figured out and quantify things and then start to talk about education for uh, people to adopt these practices. And we need dialogue. We need dialogue between the conventional and the organic sides of the industry. Right now, the gap is too wide, and we've got to narrow that, and more dialogue is needed. And next. BC is already a leader in achieving a high level of crop production success in the most expensive market in Canada. Kudos on BC. Uh, some crop input companies like TerraLink are already working on organic-based concepts. We're promoting soil health, and we need to do more of that. And I just want to say thanks to the BC government for their leadership in bringing this mandate together. And uh, hopefully it's to the mutual benefit for all.